Hey folks, in this video I'm gonna show you how cool is the real-time baker in Marmosa toolbag, especially for baking quite complex models such as this spacesuit for example. And once the bake will be ready, I will briefly show you fantastic quick and easy texturing possibilities available right inside Marmosa toolbag, which you can use to quickly explore hundreds of top quality, highly customizable materials to apply on your newly baked model. Sounds exciting? Fantastic, then let's jump right into it! So first things first, let's import our high resolution model of a suit. Let's wait a bit, since this model is quite dense in poly count. I made this spacesuit model really quick, using a marvelous designer to start with, and then use ZBrush to add additional detail. Cool! Here we have our super high res model of spacesuit with all the nice cloth details, folds and wrinkles. And now let's import our low resolution model, which is basically a decimated version of that same suit, which I also exported from ZBrush. Here's how it looks. Let me turn on the wireframe so you can see what it looks like. And just for comparison, here's how dense the high res version of it is. Very dense. Ok, so now we want to transfer all the cool details from the high poly to low poly model of the suit so that we can then do all the cool stuff with it, right? For starters, let's create ourselves a cozy bake project first. Toolbag will ask us to create an output path for our glorious bakes. Let's definitely start clean, so I will delete all of the previous bakes I had there. And let's give our bake some original name. So far so good. Now let's just drag our low res model onto the corresponding low slot in bake project. And do the same for the high res model, dragging it onto the high slot. Make sure our models are exactly inside of those slots by the way, otherwise your toolback warranty will be voided. Ok, I'm kidding. Now let's tell toolback which textures we need to bake. In this section you may do so by picking the ones you prefer. I will choose only these basic ones, normals, both tangent and object space, curvature and ambient occlusion, as these are the most important ones, but if you need more options, of course you can just click on configure button and select from the super wide variety of maps to bake. By the way, you can then even use these maps directly in Substance Painter, may you choose to proceed with texturing there, for example. Ok, now let's set the resolution to be 4K, let's leave the bake mode in Toolbag's new and shiny interactive mode, so now just press start and wait until Toolbag finishes rendering all the textures. To see the result applied on our low poly model, press preview material. And here we go, our low poly model now has all the cool details transferred from our high res model, that's fantastic. By the way, I always tend to turn on backface polygons, just so I get a clearer picture of what's going on on the other side of my model. Let's switch to ray tracing rendering mode, as it's just way nicer this way. So our bake turned out to work very well, but here's one little thing that I actually don't like. See those black edges around the neck? What are they? Let's ask Dora, where do these black edges come from? But no need to ask Dora this time, because I made these mistakes on purpose. And these dark edges come from the inconsistencies between the high res and low res versions of both models. See? This green model is the low res version of the suit, and the purple is the high res one, which Toolbag uses to project high res details from. And if you pay close attention to the neck area, where we had these black artifacts, the low poly and high poly versions don't really match that well in that region, which results in black occluded areas in the neck area. How to fix that? Easy! Let's just tweak the low poly sculpt in that area, so that it matches the surface level of a high poly model a bit better. Here, I'm just using a standard move brush to make all needed tweaks. No need to be super precise, just make sure they more or less match. So here we have our high poly model and here's our low poly one, which we're now going to re-export, overwriting the old file. And the second I switched to Marmoset, the bake updated and now it looks much better, there is just this one area that I would still like to address though. So let's quickly go back and fix it in ZBrush. 
I'm doing the same thing here, basically just trying to match the low res surface to the high poly one a bit better. Once done, I re-export the low res model overwriting the old one and as you can see it fixes it. And all of this in real time, how cool is that? Ok, now we're done with our bake and let's actually make sure that it's the baked low poly model we're seeing by turning on a wireframe for a second. Yep, looks good. And now comes the most exciting part guys. Now that we have our freshly baked texture maps ready, such as normals and ambient occlusion maps, we can go crazy with applying gazillion of materials onto our model, experimenting with various looks. So let me briefly show you how to do that. Let's start fresh with a new empty scene and import our low poly along with its newly baked textures first. Here it is. Now we need to apply those baked texture maps onto this model, so we can use the fantastic library of PBR materials available in Marmoset Toolbag. To do that, first we need to add a texture project. And here, as you can see, we have a cozy little menu saying input maps. That's exactly the place where we should input our newly baked texture maps. Let's do that immediately. Let's drag these textures onto corresponding slots and once done, let's click on that tiny little plus icon which will add a new material for us. This new material has the default name Texture Project 1 material. You can rename it of course, but I will keep it for now. This material contains all the textures we've just assigned and it will be the starting base for all the cool stuff we're going to do in a moment, adding materials from Marmoset's library. Now let's drag that newly created material onto our low poly suit model, making sure it looks correct. And then let's switch to the texturing tab. Here you will see the library containing lots of cool stuff sorted by categories such as brushes, HDR skyboxes, etc. But what we're interested for now is mainly the materials category. So feel free to pick whichever folder you like in it or just go to the root category called library and type uh, a material you're looking for. I will write plastic for example to filter out materials that look like plastic. As we type, Toolbag gives us a great collection of pre-made uh, customizable materials we can choose from. I like this plastic grainy material, I will double click uh, to, do to download it from Marmoset's server and then in the layers tab on the right I will dive inside of that texture project 1 material we created earlier. It will give me access to internal layers of that material, so all the materials I will decide to try on top of it will go there. So now I will just drag this cool plastic grainy material onto the layers tab it's pretty much the same layer stack window you have uh, in Photoshop for example. And voila, we have a cool looking black suit ready to be decorated with some punchy stickers and logos. Now we can change the color of it. Also I'm going to change the skybox to something more dynamic. Yep, looks good. Now let's actually have some fun with it. I'm going to make this spacesuit look like it's made out of a knitted wool. Just find an appropriate material in the library and drag it onto the layer stack. And of course you may tweak its parameters to your liking. For example, currently the scaling of this material seems a bit too big. We can fix that by tweaking the UV tiling parameter in the corresponding layer settings tab to the left of the layers tab. Yes, this way it's much better. But the problem is that this wool texture is too smooth now, although the original wool material we use does have displacement of course. So how should we fix it? Get out of here Dora, I can manage. We can fix it by adding a displacement map channel in the texture project. Click on the texture project and go to, no, it's not in the input maps, yes it's here, in project maps. Click on add new and select their displacement. Now go to layer settings and turn on displacement so we can see it in the viewport. Boom. Now we have displacement active, but obviously it needs some love and tweaking. The main thing about displacement is that it usually needs dense mesh. Luckily, Marmoset Toolbag has a quick way to easily add subdivisions to any model. Just select your model and activate the subdivide checkbox. Let's subdivide it a few times so we uh, can get more details. Ok, now we're talking. Now let's just decrease the overall amount of displacement, as now it's a bit too much, and we can call it a day. Of course, we can continue refining this material further, tweaking displacement amount, rotating UVs, we can subdivide it even more to achieve even more details for that cool wool pattern relief. 
so on and so forth. In the same way, you can continue to play with hundreds and hundreds of other cool materials in Marmoset's library. For example, let me try this camouflage one. It should look pretty cool on this model. Again, tweaking UVs a bit. Let's try digital camouflage this time. Or for example, this cotton one here. Meanwhile, I'm downloading this denim material and adding it on top. I think it will also look quite cool. So, denim spacesuit, why not? I like it. That's all for today, folks. I hope you find this video helpful. And if you did, hit that like button, share it on your social media, leave a heartwarming comment and subscribe to this channel to never miss a video like this. Until next time, friends!